Hello everyone, I'm Connor Kennedy, and today I'll be presenting the solution to Isaka Open 2023 Silver, Problem 3, Peridolia. In this problem, Farmer John has a string, and he uh, can see how many times the phrase Bessie appears in the string. For instance, the number of times Bessie appears in this string is 2, because if you ignore certain letters, you can see that Bessie appears once there, and then Bessie appears again here. However, that's not all. We actually need to find the sum of uh, these values over all possible substrings of this string. So for instance, we have to look at uh, this substring from this B to this E, and we need to include the single Bessie that appears in our total count. So how do we approach this problem? Well, doing it over all the substrings uh, seems pretty complicated. So let's start with the simpler problem at first, where we just have to uh, count the number of appearance of Bessie for a single string. And to do this, it's actually possible to use a greedy algorithm. And our greedy strategy here is we have to keep track of where we are in the Bessie string, and we loop over each character, and whenever we see a character that fits into the Bessie string, then we greedily take that character as part of our final result. So for instance, we start here, and we start trying to construct Bessies. So we start at the first character, which is B, and then we include that in our string because uh, B is the start of Bessie. And then we look at this E, and we include that. And then we look at this S, and we include that. We skip this Q because it isn't part of Bessie. And we see this S, and we include that. Then we see the I, include that. Skip the Z, include the E, and then we have our full Bessie. Then we start over again with the B, we include the B, we include the E, we skip this E because we want an S next, then we include this S, we skip this I because we also want an S next, include this S, uh, and then include this E, oh, I forgot to underline the I here, <laughs> so we include that I, and we include this E. And then we have our result of two Bessies being in the string. So why does this greedy strategy work? Well, we always want to choose the earliest possible appearance of a certain character, because if we don't, we'll take this string for example. If we try and skip over this E, so if we take this B, then skip this E, then we can't take an S because we need an E next, so then we take this E instead. But then we can't construct a full Bessie after that, because we skip this E, and if we had included this E, then we would have been able to construct a Bessie. So it turns out that skipping a character is always worse than trying and in including it in our Bessie strings. So how would we go about implementing this greedy algorithm? Well, to do so, we'd have to keep track of, first of all, where we are in the original string. We also need to keep track of where we are in the Bessie string. And we also need to keep track of how many Bessies we've seen so far. So, for instance, we can write a function. We can write this function here, count Bessies, that takes an S for input, which is our string. And we have this answer variable, which keeps track of how many times we've seen Bessie. And this Bessie index variable, which is where we are in this uh, Bessie string. We loop over the characters in S. We check to see if this current character in S uh, is the same as the character in Bessie. So, for instance, uh, check to see if this s is the same as, say for instance, this s. And that's the case we want to include it. And by, to include it, we simply increment the Bessie index, because that means that we've included the character and we want to go to the next character to look at what to include next. However, if we've reached the end of our Bessie string, so we've put every character into the Bessie, and then we want to start over at the beginning again, uh, we'd want to increment our answer because we found a full Bessie, and we want to reset our Bessie index to the start. Finally, once this entire for loop is done, then we've found every single Bessie that we can cram into our uh, single string, and then we return our answer. So this function here counts the number of Bessies in a string uh, by using our greedy algorithm that simply just takes a character whenever possible and tries and creates a Bessie out of it. So we've solved our problem where we have to do it on a single string.
So how can we apply this to our actual problem, where we have to count the number of essays on every single substring? It would be too slow to simply iterate over every substring, because there are o n squared possible substring, and this algorithm takes o n time. So trying to do every single substring would take o n cubed time, which is way, way too slow. Well, the idea here is we can keep track of multiple substrings at or multiple substrings at once, and we want to operate on all of them at the same time. So for instance, we can look at the substring that starts with the first character, at the same time as the substring that starts with the second character, at the same time as the substring that starts with the third character, and so on. And this will cover all of the substrings. So how can we do this? Well, we can do this by uh, trying and compress the problems and be able to store them in an uh, easy way. And to do that, we notice that in our problem here, we actually only keep two pieces of information. And those pieces of information are the number of times we've seen a Bessie and where we are in the current string. So to try and keep track of multiple different in uh, instances of this count at once, we can compress our information into a kind of state we can store this state in an array called dpi, where, uh, or called dp, where dp of i is the number of substrings where Bessie in equals i. So the important thing to notice is that we don't really have to care where a substring starts. We only have to care about what state has to be stored in here, which is where are we in the current Bessie. So like if we're on this character, we want to know like, for some strings, we're on the S here. Uh, we're on the second S in Bessie. And for other strings, like the ones that started after this initial B, we're still at the start. We still haven't added any character to a Bessie. So at this point here, we would have uh, one state in DP of three, uh, because that's the state that started this first substring. And then we'd have three states at DP of zero, because these three substrings starting with E, S, and S have not gotten the chance to start with the B yet. And in order to store our answer here, we just keep an overall answer variable for all substrings. So answer equals number of Bessies seen in every substring. And we don't actually need to differentiate between any of the substrings, because it doesn't matter where a substring starts or end, a single Bessie still contributes a single Bessie to, the, to our answer. So let's see what would be happening in our DP array as we loop through the substrings. So let's say we have this current DP here, uh, where the columns represent the different indices in the DP array. So for instance, this column 1 here uh, has a value of 7, meaning that we have 7 different substrings that are at p where Bessie index equals 1. So we have 7 different substrings that are looking for an E to put in the Bessie string. So we want to see the ways that a different uh, substrings change when we encounter a new character. So let's say we encounter the character i. So let's look at the ones with dp0 first. This means that we're at the very start of the string. We have Bessie in equals 0. So that means that we're waiting for a b to appear so that we can include in our substring. So anything that's waiting for a b to appear won't move at all, and it'll still stay at, uh, with Bessie in equals 0. And similar for anything with Bessie in of 1, uh, anything that's waiting for an E, or the first E, uh, will still stay waiting for that E. So this stays at 7, similarly this stays at 8, and this stays at 4. However, here it's a little different. Uh, these two states here are waiting for an I to appear, since Bessie in equals 4. So that means that this I being included here means they can move on to the next state. So now they'll be waiting for an E, and this actually gets included to this count here. As well as these five ones, the ones that are late waiting for the last E, will still be waiting for that last E, so it doesn't change anything there. So that results in a total of five here, and now no states are waiting for an I. Now let's say we're waiting for an E instead. So the, uh, the states are waiting for a B to appear, those with Bezzy end equals zero, those are still going to be waiting for a B, because the appearance of an E doesn't change anything. So those stay at 10. Uh, the ones waiting for the first E, however, will go on to the next state. Uh, they'll start waiting for the second S, since they found the E. 
and they'll greedily include that in their string. So along with this, uh, those get added together to get 15, and this will be left at 0. And this is the second S, so that doesn't change. Uh, this is the I, so it doesn't change. And now this is the characters that are waiting for the last E. So those go on, uh, go over here. Uh, and in our original pseudocode, you see that if Bessie n equals 6, they would wrap around to the start. So this would actually transition all the way back to the start. So we go like this. And we end up with a total of 13 here. And we'd also have a side effect here that we have to add 3 to our answer. Because that means that three of our substrings have just finished finding a Bessie. So they move back to the start of the string to look for a new Bessies. And we add three to our total Bessie count. The transitions when we find an S or a B, which are the other characters in Bessie, uh, will look similar to these, except they'll have different ones of these states changing. And if we encounter a character that isn't in Bessie, and none of our states change at all. Also note that every character we see in the string, we add 1 to dp of 0, because that indicates the start of a new substring. So whenever we encounter the start of a new substring, then that's basically just starting our function here, and Bessie in gets started off as 0. So we're starting to wait for a new b. So now that we have this, how do we actually find our final answer? Well, we have been keeping track of how many uh, total number of Bessies that we've been seeing in all of our substrings, but that only like takes into account the starts of substrings. We never actually end any substrings. So how can we do that? Well, it turns out that uh, we keep a new variable called total, and every every character we add. Uh, to total, we add the value of answer. And the reason for this is this is essentially, uh, we look at answer stores at the, the number of substrings, or the number of Bessies we've seen in all of our substrings. And these substrings can start at any character. However, when we end off a substring, then to answer, we add all of the Bessies we've seen so far. Because if we've seen some number of Bessies, like if we've seen 10 Bessies, up to a certain point, then what if we end a substring there, then that adds 10 uh, Bessies to our total count for all substrings. And on the next iteration, if we see one more Bessie, then we add 11, because now we've seen 11 Bessies in all of the substrings that end at that point. So let's see what this algorithm does on our sample string of Bessie Bessie. So we start off with a single value in dp0, this is the one that we add every character. So we start off with one there, and zero in all of our spots. However, we need to do our transition now. And to do that, we, since this is a b, then we need to take the ones at index zero and add that index one. So this turns into zero one, zero 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 zero, by the time we finish looking at our initial b. And now we go to the next character. We have 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, because we add 1 to dp0. And here, uh, this e means that this 1 could go on to the next state. So this becomes 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And next we add another 1 to our dp0. And this 1 goes there because it adds the next s to the substring. So this becomes 2, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0. And then similarly, it becomes 3, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, or 1, 0. And then once it gets this i, then we move this one, waiting for an i to the next state. So 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then here, when it reaches the e, then this one that's waiting for an e will loop back around to the start, as well as adding on to our original dp. So we get 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and we add 1 to our answer, so this becomes 1, and our, we add 1 to our total, so this becomes 1. And this represents the single substring uh, that starts with the b and ends with an e. Now we move on to our next loop of Vesi. 
So since we see a B here, all of these states and the new one that uh, see this B get moved on to this next one. So this becomes 0, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that continues very similarly from there. So this becomes 1, 0, 7, 0, 0, 0. And then uh, sorry, 2, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0. Because all these states are seeing new characters that they can include. And then 3, 0, 0, 0, 7, 0. 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 7. And finally here, uh, we add on the 7 to our answer because the, this final E got seen by all these substrings. And we put that back at the start. So we have the 4 from there, 7 from there, and the new 0. So you get a total of 12 here. And then we have zeros in all other places. And then we add 7 to our answer, so this gives us 8. And if we look at our answer values, these are all 1. And if we look at our total, then uh, we add a 1 to the total, or we add, we add an answer to the total every time. So this goes up by 1, this goes up by 1, goes up by 1, etc. And that goes up by 8 here. And that gives a 14. And then this 14 here at the end is our final answer. So, yeah, so this is our algorithm. We can just keep track of all the substrings at the same time, make sure we remember where they are in the Bessie string, and then simply uh, go through all the characters and see where they end up after each character. So, yeah, and now let's look at the code. So, here's my C code for this uh, problem. So, we have our DP here our total or our answer, just like in our solution. And remember that uh, these should be long longs, or longs in JavaScript, or Java, uh, so that it can store the answer, since I'm pretty sure it could get bigger than that. So in our loop here, uh, we increment our dp0 first, and this represents the new substring that we're adding on. And we check to see the next character. And this is a little bit ugly, but if we have a B here, then we add on all the DP zeros to DP1 and then set it to zero. So that's essentially representing the substrings that uh, are waiting for a B, and then our, we find B in the string, so those start waiting for the next E instead. And then here, we do the same for E. So the ones that are waiting for the first E go to DP2. And once they're waiting for the last E, go to DP5, or go from DP5 to DP0. And then we add uh, we add the number of ones that went from DP5 to DP0 to the answer. And then we set all of these to 0 as well. And here, if we see an S, then we uh, move all the ones from DP3 to DP4, move all the ones from DP2 to DP3, and then we set DP2 to 0. And since there's two in a row, we do this a little bit specially, where we don't actually care about adding and setting things to zero. And finally, if we get an I, this is another one of the ones I drew up on the slides, where we can get DP, uh, we set DP5, add DP4 to it, and then set DP4 to zero. And finally, at the end of all that, uh, we add on to our total answer, the number of total Bessies we've seen, and this is just a debug print. So. so, yeah. So that's the entire C++ solution to this problem. So, yep. Uh, thank you for watching.